All right, today we're going to be replacing a upper radiator hose on this 2002 Ram 1500 with a 5.9 motor in it. I noticed it was leaking, that distinct hissing sound, and I smelled that burning water. The hose is right here. This hose right here, on top of the radiator. Thank God it's the easy one. And the hole was right back here, right where it goes down into the engine. I don't know if you can see that, but right there. You see that hole right there? That little crack. But we're going to go ahead and replace the hose. I already got the new hose. And that's what we're going to do. Here's the hose we got. I got it from O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's a Gates hose. This has a guarantee on it, one year guarantee. It cost me $15.99. That was after checking multiple places. So far, the tool I see I'm going to need is this right here, and I'll show you why in just a second. We're just going to use some channel locks to take this hose off. Looks like it's a pretty easy job. The way this hose is on here, it's with these clamps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take those channel locks in here, and I'm just going to squeeze that together and push this hose back off. And the same thing on the other side. Same thing. And there's just a little apparatus on top that holds the wires and that just, you know, just move them out of our way. You can probably just, it's just a C-clamp on there and it'll just pop off. We'll put it back on onto the new hose. Here's that C-clamp I was telling you about on the hose, top of the hose. It just comes off. See how easy it is? It's just a C. It just pops right off like that. We'll just move it out of our way. There, and we'll put that on the new hose and we put it on. And that's what I was telling you about those clamps that hold that hose on. I got the channel locks on there. I'm just going to squeeze that like that and that'll loosen the hose up. And then I'll just slide that hose off. Okay, we just popped it off. Now it comes off that easy. Once you squeeze those clamps in right here, this hose just comes right off there. No problem at all. Same thing we're going to do on the other side over there. Uh, we got this one off. That was easy. But then I got in here and I was able to get the bracket off. I don't know if you can see it or not. But the, the pipe, the tube, is so tight on here I can't pull it off. I've tried everything. So I'm going to take a razor blade and I'm going to slit it right up there like that to be able to get that out of there. I'm just using a regular box cutter like that. And on the other side, I'm going to slit it right there like that so it opens up, but not here, on the, on the other side over here. We're going to go down right in here and make a cut right like in there, okay? Now, now once we get the, this hose off here, the trick is we cannot put those rings, those clamps over that hose because all it's going to do is squish the hose. So the trick is you have to put the clamps on first. So this is metal. And they slide over here. What we're going to eventually do is we're going to put the hose up to here and then we're going to clamp this down tight with the pliers or channel locks and then slide that up over our hose right there while it stays over the metal stub right there. We don't want to go past it. It'll just kink the hose. And then we got to do the same thing in there on the top of the engine where the water actually, you know, the water goes. So that's what we're going to do. That's going to be a little harder. Now I went ahead and I put the other metal clamp on the top of that stub that's sticking up that's on top of the motor and that's there and then I went ahead and put position my hose where it goes under these, these these wires and remember the ring I told you about we'll put that back on that ring clips around that hose and it, hold, it has a spot for those wires to be held in here so we'll, we'll eventually we'll clip this back on here like that and then that holds these wires up off your up off your hose your wires will go through here but Here's the other end of our hose, and I'm going to show you. Here's our metal clamp. 
that we slid right here, that we slid over the metal stub on your radiator, the stub, that's metal, it's hard, and then we just slide the, the radiator hose over it like that, and now we're going to take the clamp and tighten this up and then slide it over this and we'll, we'll, we'll work it in there to where it's holding that hose on good and we'll do the same on the other side when we get to it. And that side right there is the harder one. All right, here's what happened, folks. We got this one on up top, which is much easier to work with because we're, you know, right up top. But when we went to go down in the hole here on top of the engine block, right down in here, I could not get the pliers in there enough to get this hose back on there. Okay? It just, it just kept slipping off of these things every time you try to clamp them. So, I went to the auto parts store and they had this tool for $56 that goes down inside there, has a cable on it, it looked really cool, and it just closes it shut, and then you can get your hose back on it real easy. Well, when I looked up on the wall, it said radiator clamps, <laughs> which is your typical, uh, they call them worm brackets, I guess, there's different names for them, but this was 80 cents, and then just a 5 16th wrench ratchet and socket, and I'm just going to go ahead and use one of these for 82 cents, and that's what I did. So that's what we're going to do next. And I just slid that on there. I, I can actually put it on the hose, and I did. I put it on the hose first, and um, just got it to not tight enough to where it wouldn't slide all the way down to the engine block. And then I slid it over the little stub that sticks up, and I'm going to be tightening it up. What I also used too was a 5 16th socket and I, I got a swivel socket see that swivels just just so you can work it you know, and get in there with it and you know finagle it a little easier that's it I'm gonna tighten it down now okay I found the easiest way to do this is just with a long regular head screwdriver and I just position my ring correctly and I can just tighten it down this worm clamp now. Um, you could use a 5 16th like I originally showed you. I put that on the end of one of these swivels. But it was easier just to use a long screwdriver. Position correctly. It fits in there. There's nothing in my way. Again, this is a Dodge Ram 1500 with a 5.9 motor. So might be different for a different vehicle, but this worked fine. And that's it. Okay, I got that tightened down. Now we're just gonna do this part of the job right here. And I just slid that ring back on there, and then your wires go right back in the top. And this just holds your wires here. That's all we're gonna do is put those back in there. And there it is. We just slid the wires right back where they're supposed to go. Right in this, this little clamp here and it just holds them away from everything. But it was simple. That's it. And just also to show you too, I had this cushion up here so I could get up in there. I just laid it over the top of my engine just so it wasn't, you know, uncomfortable. But you can put anything up there that's soft. That's how I did it. Let's start her up. Take a look. Not seeing any leaks. Looks good. I'll tell you what, folks, the hardest part about this job was the top of that engine block, getting your hands in there. It's very tight, very hard to work with, but you're working on the 5.9 motor on the Dodge Ram. Don't use that clamp, this one here. You can use it up top. I would just switch it over to a regular worm clamp down there and use a long shank screwdriver to uh, tighten that down. It makes it so much easier. There it is, right there. Right. Hope this helps you out.